Welcome to Dawn. Welcome to Dawn. Are we good? Have you shared the word out? Have you told people we're here and we're up and rolling? If you've not done that, try and do that as quickly as you can. Um, let me try and get my background on. All right. Um, can you hear me? Can you see me? Are we happy? Let me know. Anybody? Hear me? See me? Have you... Have you shared the stream? Come on, share the stream. Tell somebody that we're up and running. And let's do this. Uh, Pat, thank you. He says we're, she says we're loud and clear. Okay. Um, let me sort this out. Lawrence Garment. Lawrence Garment. Let me see if I could put something up for you, actually. Uh... Yeah, let me see if I could add something here. Okay. At some point, I will get to this. All right. So welcome to Dawn with Tingridge. Um This morning, I'm going to talk about Aaron's garment. Now, the reason why I just threw up that slide and I'll throw it up again is because Aaron's... Um, Okay, my backup is asking me for notes. There are no notes per se, so I'll need you to, there are no notes for me to send to you, so I'll need you to work with me, okay? Um, yes, Aaron's garments. The reason why I'm going to talk briefly on Aaron's garments, and I say briefly because I'm actually going to be focused on a confession. We're actually going to make a confession. And every time we make a confession, please understand that a confession is actually a meditation. Now, we will not have enough time to do a lot of the other aspects of meditation because meditation, remember, involves thought, it involves emotion, and then it involves words. I hope you got that. Meditation involves thoughts, it involves emotion, and it involves words. Um, but the backdrop to Aaron's garment is actually a message that I preached a few days ago at our Sunday morning service. I want you to go on our YouTube channel before we take it down and watch the message. If you go on this same channel, you will need to search for this. Search for this. It's freely given the God nature part two. It's actually the God nature part 2.1, but the God nature part two, search for this and then um, watch it. It'll give you a bit more context. It'll give you a bit more background as to what, what I mean by Aaron's garment um, to augment what you're about to hear. But nonetheless, this should still make, make sense. Now, for us to say Aaron's garment, obviously we're talking about the fact that at some point in time, for those of you that are familiar with your Bible, Aaron was the older brother of Moses. And when the children of Israel were brought out of, of Egypt, um, Aaron was ordained by God to become the high priest. It's important to note this because the, the, that high priest and the order of the Old Testament high priest has been replaced by a new high priest and the new high priest who is Jesus. But yet there is some, um, the high priest of the old covenant was a typology of the high priest of the new covenant. Now, of course, a lot of things have changed and, and the high priest of the new covenant, Jesus, the Bible tells us, is founded on better promises. But when we look at some of the things that pertain to the high priest of the old covenant, um, Aaron in particular, um, we are able to learn some of the benefits that are actually available to us in, in multiples. We're talking about in, 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 um, in grading um, dimensions now that we're in the new covenant. Remember, because our high priest is Jesus, right? Whatever accrues to Jesus also accrues to us. Now, that said, I want to read to you Isaiah 61 verse 10. Isaiah 61 verse 10. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He's talking about us wearing a garment. He says, he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. 
as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. So he's saying to us that the believer, if you're watching this and you are born again, you've accepted Jesus, the believer is clothed with the garment of salvation. The believer is covered with the robe of righteousness. Now, the Bible speaking to us about Jesus says that Christ is our righteousness. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, it says that Christ has been made unto us righteousness. Then Galatians tells us that we have been baptized into Christ. We have been baptized into Christ. So the Bible then tells us in Romans that we should put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why am I giving you all the scriptures? Listen, the Bible is explaining to us that the believer has a garment that he is wearing. He has a robe that has been placed on him, right? There is a robe that has been placed on the believer. There is a garment that has been placed on the believer. Why this is significant? Because if we understand the advantages of the robe, we understand the advantages of the garment, we can see what you don't know, you can't enjoy. This kingdom functions um, by revelation, this kingdom, our kingdom, the ultimate kingdom, functions on the premise of understanding. That's why one of the things that the Holy Spirit does for us, he makes us of quick understanding. He causes lights to flood our imagination. Why? Because in this kingdom, um, this family of God, we rise by revelation. Now, this is significant. Because to understand some of the advantages of the robe of righteousness that we carry, we should actually even go back to the Old Testament and look at the robe that Aaron, who was the high priest, wore. And what were some of the benefits of that robe that Aaron wore? Because we are now wearing the robe of our high priest. Actually, our high priest has become our robe. Um, Aaron was the high priest then, and he wore a robe. Let's look at some of the advantages of Aaron's robe. One of the advantages of Aaron's robe, you will notice, was that no matter the plague, oh, this is big, no matter the plague that hit the children of Israel, no matter the plague, no matter the assault that hit the children of Israel, there was a time that 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 snakes were biting them they were dying there was a time a plague hit them again and they were dying there was a time that the earth opened up in judgment and they were dying even that time when the earth opened up and they were dying aaron was part of the the reason why they were being judged he had joined them to even make a golden calf but you will notice no matter the plague that hit the children of Israel, no matter the sickness or disease that hit the children of Israel, Aaron not once was affected. As long as Aaron was the high priest, as long as Aaron wore the robe of the high priest, that robe exempted Aaron, oh, this is important, that robe exempted Aaron from any form of sickness and disease. The robe of righteousness that you, I, I just felt God all over me. The robe of righteousness that you and I wear has exempted us from all forms of sickness and disease. Forget what you are feeling in your body. Somebody will get healed this morning. That robe of righteousness that you are wearing has exempted you and I from all forms of sickness and disease. I just heard the Lord say that tonight on Activate, or I should mention Activate is generally our in-person, in-week service at the City of Zion. If you generally patronize Activate, where we, which is only a live session, for the next number of weeks, or well, the entire Tuesdays in March, right, starting from today, we are going to move Activate online. We have taken our entire church and ministry online because we are renovating our facilities uh, to make it bigger and better. And so Activate, starting from today, moves online. And the Lord says that tonight on Activate, he is going to be releasing exemptions, that they are covenants, they are schedules, schedules that are not of him that have been earmarked for God's children, and that tonight will be a night of exemption. 
right? But back to back to this morning, right? The garment that you and I wear, robe of righteousness, just like and even more so as it worked for Aaron, it has worked for us. You see, in Aaron's case, it only worked for him for the most part because he was wearing the garment. In our case, this garment is available to every believer. You are exempted from sickness and disease because, oh, because of the robe of righteousness. Let me give you another one. Another thing that we see occurring in the life of Aaron was the fact that Aaron could not die. Listen, Aaron could not die. It did not matter the circumstance. It did not matter the scenario. It did not matter whether he was complicit or he was not. It did not matter whether he was prayerful or he was not. The garment that Aaron wore, hear this, the garment that Aaron wore also exempted him from death. It exempted him. Every time I say it, I feel God just go whoosh. God just goes whoosh all over me. He was exempted from sickness and disease. And that robe of righteousness, Ekaya, in the next few moments, I'm going to lead you in a confession of righteousness. As you make that confession with me, sickness will be taken from your body. Yokes will break. There is somebody with a back pain. It will vanish. You will see, you will experience a, a freedom in your body, right? He was exempted from sickness and disease, and he was exempted from death. He just could not die. So much so that when it was time for the high priest, the, the responsibility of high priest to move from him to his children, the Lord had to give a commandment that Moses should take Aaron to the top of the mountain and there remove his garment. And that as they remove the garment, he will die on the mountain. And that's exactly what happened. When they got to the top of the mountain, Moses removed the garment from Aaron, placed it on his son, and there Aaron died. Not the next day, not the next week, there Aaron died. It tells us that what was sustaining the life of Aaron was the garment. You and I, if you are born again, you are watching this, you are wearing the robe of righteousness. You are wearing, you have put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the advantages of this robe of righteousness that we are wearing, we are exempted from death. Oh, child of God, this is important. We are exempted from death. You and I need to tell our children to regularly just say, I have put on the robe of righteousness and I have all its advantages. Because these are the advantages of the robe of righteousness we wear. Believers are not supposed to die prematurely. They are just not supposed to die prematurely. Uh, people say things like, um, um, it was their time. If, if it happened, that means God allowed it. There is no such thing as God allowed it. God cannot interfere in the foolishness of man. If man is ignorant, he will suffer the consequences of his ignorance, whether God wants him to or not. God has no say in the impact. See, God has put a law that there are actions and there are consequences. And so if you perform the action, there will be a consequence. God will not interfere with the consequence. If he does that, right, then there is a challenge. Oh, I don't even have time to explain it. When we talk about God being sovereign, he's not talking about the fact that he can do anything he likes and not do anything he likes. No, there, God has placed certain restrictions on his own self, even though he is sovereign. Um, I've dealt with that on Dawn. Feel free to type um, the sovereignty of God and you will get the core understanding of what it means for God to be sovereign. But back to this. When you understand the value of the robe of righteousness that you are wearing, you will understand that one of its key advantages, you cannot die. You just cannot be killed. It is only when you take off the robe of righteousness or you, 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 you don't hold in your consciousness or you've not workshopped it into your subconscious. The fact that you are permanently, permanently wearing this robe, it's a robe that cannot be removed from you. 
cannot be removed from you. It means you cannot be sick. And if there is sickness currently active in your body, it has to end now. It is illegal. It is illegal for you are exempted from all forms of sickness. It does not matter whether you were, you were the originator of the sickness. You are exempted from all forms of sickness. You are exempted from death. Another thing that we see with Aaron was that Aaron could not be cursed. It, you know, it did not even matter if the curse was coming from Moses. It did not matter. Aaron could not be cursed. You know, too many believers are afraid of, 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 of Sangomas in Nigeria. We call them native doctors, witch doctors, prognosticators. When you understand the robe of righteousness that you wear, and it's a permanent robe because you have been baptized into Christ. To be baptized into Christ means you have been buried in Christ. When you appreciate this burial into Christ, this complete immersion into Christ, that means you're wearing a permanent robe of righteousness. It means you cannot be cursed. There was a time that Aaron and Miriam um, were saying things they ought not to have said about Moses. And the angel showed up, rebuked both of them. And, and, and when the angel left, when the presence of the angel left, only Miriam had leprosy. Miriam had leprosy. Aaron did not. Now, Aaron was rebuked. What Aaron did was wrong. Aaron learned his lesson. He never did it again. But the curse could not rest on Aaron. Why? Because as long as Aaron, the high priest, wore his robe, was in that office of the high priest and had the robe on him and remained in the office of the high priest, no curse could be activated on his life. Are you with me? No curse. Child of God, you cannot be cursed. It does not matter whether they send the lightning from Limpopo. It does not matter whether they say that is that witch doctor. You don't need to lose sleep. What you need to do is meditate. Meditate on what I'm going to lead you in today. Let this meditation flood your mind. And it will, even without having to contend with any active curse, any active curse will be suspended and will be cancelled, and any potential curse will not manifest. Am I making sense? Even the potential ones will not manifest. Another advantage of the robe of righteousness is that you can actually extend the robe. See, in, in Aaron's time, that robe, that garment that he wore, actually also served as a covering over his children. Oh, I wish I could show you that, but I need us to get into this. You can extend your robe of righteousness to actually cover your family, to actually cover particularly your children. You can extend that robe of righteousness to cover your children. Ah, child of God. You can even begin to extend the robe of righteousness to cover a city. See, there was something called cities of refuge in the time of Aaron, Moses, um, children of Israel. It was called the, the, a city of refuge. Now, what will happen is, if a man had inadvertently, meaning um, it, it was not a deliberate act of murder, he had inadvertently committed murder. So what today, in today's parlance, we will call it manslaughter, or we will call it, um, there's another term that we'll call it here in South Africa. That man, when the family, because according to the law, an eye for an eye, whether you knew about it or you did not, an eye for an eye, he you killed somebody, you should be killed. That man could escape to what was called a city of refuge, which had a high priest, a priest living in, a high priest. If he was able to make it to the city of refuge, even though he had committed an act, um, a, a, a death act, he could not be killed. The people seeking revenge could get to the city of refuge and demand he be released. And the people, including high priests in the city of refuge, could insist he will not be given to you. And there's nothing they could do about it. The high priest, the high priest, 
could then say over that man, he will put him on trial, say over that man, this was not a deliberate act, whatever he says, but if the high priest determines that this man should not be handed over to judgment, there was nothing anyone could do about it. Nothing anyone could do about it. And as long as that man stayed in the city of refuge, where the high priest had oversight, his life remained spared. The robe of righteousness we carry with our words, just like the high priest, you can speak a covering over your city, over your loved ones, even over the loved one that deserves to be judged. Ah, I wish. Okay, uh, Umlu says homicide. No, homicide means you committed murder of some sort, um, but what kind of murder? Okay, if the high priest could use his words to stop that man from being killed, <clears throat> you have the robe of righteousness. You and I have been baptized into our high priest. Our words can preserve our city. It can preserve our loved ones. We can speak over them. And because of this robe of righteousness, we can preserve their lives from death. We can preserve their lives from judgment. Do not play around if you are born again. That's why I was asking you to go on my YouTube channel and watch this. You see this? Go on my YouTube channel and watch this again. Those of you that watched it, if you've not watched it a second time, no, what are you doing? Go back and watch it again. You need to embrace it. the reality of the righteousness of God that we are. I want to lead you in a confession. Are you ready? You repeat this confession after me. See, this confession is for you and I. What I've explained this morning is so that now that you understand this and you have affirmed this over yourself, you can now in your own time speak over your family, protect your loved ones, preserve your life from death, insist that there can be no sickness or disease. You can do this. You don't need, you don't need to workshop it. You just need to accept it. I have the robe of righteousness. If Aaron's garment could do that for him, and that was old covenant, ours is greater. Are you ready for me? Let me show you something. So you will repeat this after me. Are we ready? Let's do this together. You will repeat this after me. Hallelujah. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Come on. I'll say it, repeat it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I am righteous and accepted before God because Jesus is righteous and accepted before God. Yes, yes. I have the nature of God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It is the nature of righteousness. I have the nature of God. It is the nature of righteousness. It is my only nature. It is my only nature. I yield only to this nature and therefore I am above only and never beneath. Let's say it again. I yield only to this nature and therefore I am above only and never beneath. Hallelujah. Ha. I cannot sin in mind or body for the seed of Christ is in me. His righteousness is my righteousness. I cannot sin in mind or body for the seed of, right of Christ is in me. His righteousness is my righteousness. Oh, some part of my slide isn't showing. 
Okay, repeat after me. I do only the things that please the Father. I do only the things that please the Father. His thoughts are my thoughts. His ways are my ways. Hallelujah. I am righteous. Therefore, I am permanently blessed. Come on. I am righteous. Therefore, I am permanently blessed beyond any curse, above every sickness, disease, lack, and death. I am righteous. Therefore, I am permanently blessed beyond any curse and above every sickness, disease, lack, and death. <laughs> I walk in this truth daily and see its fruit in my life daily. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I walk in this truth daily and see its fruit in my life daily. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you right now to begin to thank God. Begin to thank God that you have put on the robe of righteousness. So you are permanently favored. You are permanently preserved. You are permanently catered for. One other thing that the robe of righteousness did for the, the garment, uh, or Aaron's garment did for him. Hear this. Aaron's garment, because he was high priest, all the priests, by default, had an inheritance allocated to them. See, they, the, the children of Israel had to allocate an inheritance to the, to the priests. And so 48 cities that they did not have to go to war for. Hear what I'm saying? 48 cities that they did not. The other tribes had to go to war to claim their city. So they will war, claim a city, and put their insignia on it. But the Levites did not have to go to war. These cities were allocated to them. It's a message to us that there is an inheritance that has already been assigned to us. Your robe of righteousness demands that you walk in your divine inheritance. Kings have kingdoms. Priests were allocated resources. I declare that in your your mind is filled with your consciousness, with the consciousness of your divine righteousness. Therefore, therefore, you walk in your divine inheritance. You walk in your divine inheritance. You walk in that which has been freely given in the name of Jesus, I declare. Every covenant of death disannulled, I declare. Every sickness in your body healed, I declare. That you are exempted from every curse, I declare. That the wisdom needed to, to, to lay hold of your inheritance released upon you, you are permanently favored today. You testify. You are permanently kindebo shakila mandules. You are permanently favored, and you walk. You walk in an overflow, the overflow of God's inheritance for your life and destiny. I declare that this year you are the visible display. You are the visible display of his grace, his unlimited grace and kindness. You are the visible display of his unlimited, unrestricted, without bounds, grace and kindness in Jesus' name. I would ask you, go back to this, just fast forward to the confession part. And for the rest of the week, I ask of you, say it again and again. 
When I give instructions like this, pay attention. Don't take it for granted. This week, schedule it. Go back to this. Fast forward, since you understand what I've explained, fast forward to the confession parts and say it again and again. Are you with me? Share your testimonies. I, I just sense God this morning. You testify. New things happen. New graces manifest. You testify. God bless your family. God's grace is upon you. I want to mention something. Men, if you are in South Africa, we have a men's gathering coming up at the end, at the end of this month. It's on the 24th. If you're in South Africa, anywhere in South Africa, you can make a plan to attend. This is going to be profound. It's on the, when is this? It's on the 24th, right? I believe this is on the 24th. If I'm not mistaken, let me let me try and move something here so that I can. Yeah, it's on the 24th, Friday the 24th of March. The details are on are on your screen right now. Um, it's going it's holding at the Dingfen Golf Estate. Um, Dr. Paul Yamada is going to be there. You don't want to miss it, right? He's a psychologist, and I've I've heard him before. Some of the things that he pulls off. They are spectacular. There will be such liberation. So mothers, um, wives, sisters, daughters, encourage the men in your life to make it to the Danefin Golf Estate, 6.30 p.m. Um, for mentality as we address things relating to men. If you've been blessed, I always say share this. Let somebody else hear this. If you've not subscribed, please subscribe. You testify in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a fruitful week. Share your testimonies with us. We'd love to hear them. Bye for now.